The 2014 UCI Tour of Tobago is underway with a rolling start for about the first 1.7 kilometers before they'll drop the flag and the racing will begin for real. 124 kilometers in all today, including six categorized climbs and many more. The 2014 UCI Tour of Tobago is now underway, 124 kilometers traversing the entire island of Tobago. Hello again, everyone. I'm Mark Brown, along with Ronald Dickey. Ronald, we expect an incredible day today. Very hot conditions and incredible tests for these climbers. Six categorized climbs today. What do you expect? Well, I expect the climbers to really come out today. Uh, we will miss the riders like uh, Allheiser, who was second uh, last year tour. But uh, we have some good riders uh, in this race. Uh, PSL came with five climbers this year, and they are looking to take the victory uh, in the end. Uh, Ronald is a former junior and U23 and King of the Mountains champion here. Tell us about the physical test of this incredible UCI Tour of Tobago. Well, when we start, it's uh, kind of rolling as we head down the highway, but as soon as we swing off onto Chauvin Road, and it's the first hill, they actually call it Bad Hill because it's bad for the riders as they go up. It's really hard, and they're going to be uh, flying going up there, and they're going to try to get their climbers into position just before because it's going to be the first climb uh, as we start to go up. It's not categorized, but it's hard enough for some of the riders to suffer a little bit and get dropped off the main peloton. Six categorized KOMs, they're all brutal, very steep climbs. And Ronald, the descents so often are a big part of the story of this race. Yes, it is. A lot of winding descents, and we have a lot of bad road as well, a lot of depression, debris on the road. And we might see some riders getting a lot of mechanical punctures as we go down the descents. Well, we're just getting started with the 2014 Tour of Tobago, and these are the easiest roads they'll be on so far, the first 18 or 20K. And then not much flat road after that. Now beginning the descent on down into Kastara Bay. We've got a crash on the road. One rider is in the middle of the road under his bike at the moment. It's a PSL Well Services rider. And that is number 105, Maxim Jenkins, still having some problems. Also stopped by the side of the road is number 31, Guy Costa. Now check that, that is number 131. We're being told we need to push on as the PSL Well Services rider is going to have to probably see the ambulance at this point. Maxim Jenkins down on the road. Now we catch up to the front and we have two riders off the front of the race. It's PSL Well Services Mathieu Jeunesse of France and Cuban rider Vicente Santabria from Team Braves. The two riders are making their descent into Castara. A look at the map shows the descent after a great deal of climbing, all uncategorized climbs. And now 35 kilometers in, about a quarter of the way through this race. It won't be long before the first KOM at Englishman's Bay, about nine kilometers from here. Still a little time for Santa Bria and Jeunesse to enjoy the descent into Castara with Jeunesse leading the way. And now our chasers, 20 seconds behind the leaders, starting to string out a bit here, making their way into Castara. Some absolutely spectacular views as we start winding our way down these descents on narrow and winding roads heading for Castara Bay, one of the most beautiful parts of the island of Tobago. Our two leaders making their way to Little Englishman's Bay. It's Matu Jeunesse from PSL Well Services and Vicente Santabria from Team Brave still out ahead. 
Another breathtaking view from Tobago's leeward side facing the Caribbean Sea. And our chase group not far behind, just a 20 second gap to the front of the chasers. And now Yandi Schmidt creating some space between himself and the rest of the chase group. About 20 riders chasing our two lead riders at the moment. And about another 11 riders, some 14 seconds behind the main chase group, working their way up from Little Englishman's Bay. Once the riders get past Little Englishman's Bay, they'll pass Englishman's Bay, one of Tobago's gyms. So we have the first major move of the day. Vicente Sanabria from Team Braves has gotten a gap off the elite group of chasers. Ronald Dickey, what do you think of this move? Well, it's a very good move if he just wants to get climber points. But as we can see, we're still very early in the stage and the rain, the clouds are setting in. So we, he's, it's a good move, but he'll be caught, I think, just before Palo Tuve. But again, we have seen a lot of riders go down and the descents and with the rain come in, he has to be able to stay upright. So Vicente Sanabria crosses the king of the mountain points and he has taken the first climb of the UCI Tour of Tobago. Darren Matthews among three riders off the front now. Matteo Jeunesse, Darren Matthews, as well as the leader of the stage, Vicente Sanabria, about 15 seconds up the road. They want the police to go through. 45 kilometers in, and a look ahead up the road to the two leaders. So a two-man group of leaders up the Parlotuvier climb. They're just at the lower slopes of this 2.9-kilometer ride. It is PSL Well Services rider Gilmar Rivera's Garzon, and riding alongside fellow breakaway rider Vicente Sanabria from Team Braves. It is the second of six KOMs on the day. Gilmar Riveros Garzon, the first over the KOM point on the Parlo Tuvier climb. So he picks up first place points there with Vicente Sanabria picking up second place points on that second of six KOMs today. Gilmar Riveros Garzon is descending much more quickly at the moment than his escape mate Vicente Sanabria as we come down from the KOM number two as we descend down towards Bloody Bay. That is UCI Tour of Tobago 2014 leader, Gilmar Riveros Garzon. With a little bit of a gap over his escape mate, he went through that descent a lot faster than did Vicente Sanabria. So there is a little bit of a gap as we start some more climbing. This though, not a categorized climb. We're being shown a gap of 60 seconds as Riveros Garzon continues to climb and try to put some space between himself and Sanabria. And here comes Vicente Sanabria. I would have to say that that gap is not 60 seconds, probably more like 45 at the moment. So he may have recovered somewhat as he heads on up the road. Now we'll see what kind of gap we have into the main group of chasers, and there they are. So they have almost caught Vicente Sanabria. The main group of chasers, we're going to say one minute back, and they're about to catch up with Vicente Sanabria. So no more than a minute up the road right now, the leader of this stage, Gilmar Riveros Garzon, and riding strong here. Riding strong here in the chase from Team Argon 18, Patrick Moran. He had a spectacular performance in the Tobago International Cycling Classic leading in. Right next to him, Darren Matthews, the 2012 champion of the UCI Tour of Tobago. He also has two Cocos teammates with him. A couple of foundation riders in there as well. It looks like Felix Cruz is in that group. So an elite group of riders, including Aurelian Daniel, who won stage two of the Tobago International Cycling Classic. On the tail end of this group of chasers is Winston David. Winston David, the yellow jersey winner this week at the Tobago International Cycling Classic. And Vicente Santabria about ready to be caught here 
by this elite group of chasers. So with Gilmar Rivero's Garcon up the road, no more than a minute, maybe less than that, an elite group of chasers with some moves happening here, Ronald. Yeah, we see uh, that uh, Garzon is looking very strong indeed. He was coming up Lance for me very fast, uh, maybe 45 seconds, but the main peloton, we see Argon doing the work. But now we could see uh, Team Cocos coming to the front and they are really driving it as we come to the top of this KOM. Uh, Darren Matthews is in this group and we see a Team Foundation rider and another Team uh, PSL rider also making it in this uh, four-man group. So an elite group of riders here up to the front of the stage on KOM number three, the toughest climb of the day, the Lance Forme KOM. A close call there for Gilmar Riveros Garzon. One of the cows getting a little too close to the road. So unfortunately, we don't go into the beautiful fishing village of Charlottesville. Instead, we climb straight out of it into KOM number four, 1.5 kilometers of climbing. It should be called the Great Wall of Charlottesville. It is incredibly steep. With the UCI Tour of Tobago leader, Gilmar Riveros Garzon, the Colombian rider, riding for PSL Well Services. He's made a brilliant ride today as he, if he has time to take a look over his left shoulder, he'll see beautiful Man of War Bay. And this is what the Tour of Tobago is all about. Incredibly tough climbs and spectacular views. Gilmar Riveros Garzon all alone on the Charlottesville climb, 1.5 kilometers out of the town of Charlottesville and up to KOM point number four, the fourth of six KOMs on the day. And another one will be following very quickly when we hit Speyside. And then it'll be a brief respite of more rolling and flatter roads along the Atlantic when we get there before one more climb just before the finish. Each switchback you turn and you hope that perhaps it levels out a little bit and it never seems to. Another wall facing Rivero's Garzon. Up out of the saddle and definitely laboring here. Be interesting to see when we can get a new gap. We think we're going to get one as we... I'm out of my Jeep, out of the top, and I can look back down the switchback, and the chase is within sight. There are three men, two Cocos riders and one Foundation rider. They're not too far behind. They are definitely taking time back on the leader. Getting a gap of 20 seconds, but if there's a wide enough open stretch of road, he will see his chasers any moment now. And they are coming into view. One Cocos rider followed by a foundation rider and another Cocos rider. So three chasers will have the leader in their sights. Man of War Bay in the background, and the battle for the lead is on. So the man who's been leading over these last several kilometers on a very impressive breakaway, Gilmar Rivero's Garcon, it appears is about to be caught. This is the Charlottesville climb, one of the steepest that we'll have in this year's Tour of Tobago. The race is now on, Ronald. The race is really on, and they just bridged that gap. So it is Felix Cruz that's come across that gap to catch Rivero's Garcon. He's brought with him the Team Cocos rider Oscar Pachon. So now three riders in this lead group. Pachon's been strong all week. The Colombian took fourth place in stage one of the Tobago International Cycling Classic and a fifth place finish in stage two, which was a tough hilly stage, similar in some ways to today's race. Still a ways to go, and the grade just never, ever seems to flatten out until the climb is over. And very brutal at the moment. There they are, three across the road. You can see the struggles that they're having with the steep grade of this climb. So it's Oscar Pachon in the bright red and green trim of Team Cocos leading at the moment as Felix Cruz, the black and red of Team Foundation, going in on second wheel. And the man who's been leading on a couple of climbs now Gilmar Rivero's Garcon now taking up third wheel. There is another Cocos rider coming up in sight. So this could be a great help for Oscar Pachon later in the race. 
The other Cocos rider making his way up now is number 11. That's Carlos Ospina. Some great battling going on here. As Foundation's Felix Cruz, he also led for much of stage two of the Tobago International Cycling Classic. He's used to doing it on his own. Didn't have much help in that stage before ultimately dropping in the final lap. So the man coming across the Charlottesville KOM, Oscar Pachon of Columbia and Team Cocos, leading three men across the top of the fourth of six KOMs, the Charlottesville climb. Felix Cruz in that lead group as well as the man who's led throughout this stage, Gilmar Riveros Garcon. We've made the bridge from the Caribbean side to the Atlantic side, coming into the village of Speyside, one of my favorite sites here on the island of Tobago. Off in the distance, Little Tobago, breeding site for seabirds, also known as Bird of Paradise Island. And in between, it's Goat Island, that tiny private island, once owned by the author Ian Fleming of the James Bond series. We come out of the village of Speyside. We now head for the Speyside climb, the fifth of six on the menu in the Tour of Tobago. So three men leading, heading into KOM number five, Oscar Pachon of Team Cocos. Also, Gilmar Riveros Garza who was on a solo breakaway for so much of the day, and Felix Cruz of Team Foundation trying to chase and catch up is Coco's teammate, Carlos Espina. So Carlos Espina making an attack here at the very foothills of the Speyside KOM number five. Here's our second chase group, including Darren Matthews, Devo Janess, and Aurelian Daniel. 56 seconds back. So with Carlos Ospina making an attack from a four-man escape group on the fifth of six climbs today. We've seen a lot of action on some of these climbs and a few moves. This one is a very interesting one. After this climb, it's a lot of flat before we get to the final climb near the finish. What's your analysis of this so far, Ronald? Well, I wasn't expecting Espina to attack so uh, in the end because he was dropped on the Charlottesville climb. But he seemed to found his legs as we came through space side and uh, with a teammate in the chasing group, he has that advantage to stay out in front and maybe to get some more sprint uh, climber points uh, in this uh, stage. His teammate is Oscar Pachon, just a little bit back down the road as part of that three-man chase group, including Felix Cruz and Gilmar Riveros Garzon. And now the gap starting to narrow as Felix Cruz leads Oscar Pachon up across this gap. And by doing so, he may be doing Ospina and certainly Team Cocos a favor as Pachon and Ospina are teammates. Still winding our way up to that KOM number five. So Felix Cruz and Oscar Bachon are coming up and getting just almost catching the leader of this stage, Carlos Ospina. What do you make of this? Of course, Pachon is Ospina's teammate. Well, the Cocos are going to try to, as well, what we would say, hit the one, two. You, you would see uh, uh, Espina um, trying to, again, move to the front as quickly as possible. Cruz is climbing very well indeed because he's doing all the work and he's closing the gap because they are within a, a 200 meters of each other. And we'll wait to see if you'll be able to stay with the two Cocos riders or are they going to hit the one-two punch in the end and try and get away. 
So Coco seems to be set up very nicely here as they're about to take on some drinks. Still not to the top of the Speyside KOM. And now the gap perhaps about to be closed. We're about to have three men at the lead. And that's in some ways great news because Felix Cruz, at least for him, is in the lead group. However, he's got two men of another team that may be working together. Top of the climb, Oscar Pachon coming across to take top points here on the space side climb. Cruz taking second points and Ospina third. And as we come through Roxboro on some of the flat part along the Atlantic, just about 35 kilometers to go from the finish line, we're getting a two minute gap for this three man breakaway group. Oscar Pachon and his teammate Carlos Ospina both riding for Team Cocos and Felix Cruz from Team Foundation all working together at the moment on the flat roads and this will be the signature roads along the Atlantic but there is still one more KOM to go it's the Belmont climb the sixth and final climb of the day and that'll kick in about hundred and nine kilometers into this 124 kilometer race and it is the longest of the climbs totaling 4.7 kilometers but flat roads for now along the beautiful Atlantic coast of Tobago. Roads kicked up a little bit as we head out of Roxboro with spectacular views of the Atlantic Ocean and Queens Bay in the background. Three more riders have attached to that chase group, but now three minutes off the lead group, so they are losing ground. And further back, some riders just trying to hang on. Totally dead. So with 15 kilometers to go, the riders have come to the final obstacle of the UCI Tour of Tobago. It's the Belmont Climb, a 4.7 kilometer climb. It's the final of six KOMs today. And uh, Ronald Dickey, three men all together, Pachon, Ospina, and Cruz. And no doubt, this is where the race is going to be decided today. And as you said that, Mark, we have a rider, it looks like uh, Espina, trying to get off the front. And he's being chased very hard by crews as they are flying at the bottom slopes of this mountain. Uh, but it's still a long way to go. It's four kilometers long, so they have to conserve some energy. And it really kicks up when it comes to the end. The longest climb of the day. You don't want to make that move too early, that's for sure. When the riders do summit the Belmont KOM, they'll be about 10 kilometers away from the finish line, bit of a descent, and then flying through the city streets of Scarborough. And this is Felix Cruz lifting the pace a little bit, a little bit of an early test here of the Coco's teammates, and Oscar Pachon working very hard to get his wheel. And Carlos Ospina having a little bit more of a struggle. And now Pachon says, yeah, I'll mark that and he's going to move on by so very comfortably done but it is appears to be Ospina dropping at the moment this could be part of the plan for Felix Cruz we saw him much earlier a few dozen kilometers ago try to separate these two teammates he was able to do it momentarily before they reconnected we'll see whether this one works as Ospina drops back towards the team car for a chat as we look back down the road Carlos Ospina can still see the two leaders of this race but he is starting to lose some ground here. We may have gotten this down to a two-man race, but we're not counting Ospina out yet. As Felix Cruz leads Oscar Pachon up the final climb of the day, we're getting word that the gap back to the leading chasers is 
four minutes now. So now they know that none of the chase group will catch them. The question is, will Carlos Ospina, who has dropped back from these two by a couple hundred meters, will he be able to reconnect with this group? The other thing to think about here, of course, is when we do finally summit the KOM number six, the Belmont climb, there's still 10 kilometers to go. So any gap that's gained on this climb may not last. Pachon and Cruz have looked over their shoulder just a little bit to see if Carlos Ospina, who is the Team Coco's teammate of Pachon, has been able to make up any ground towards them. And really, we had to look back down the road of probably 300 meters and no sign of Ospina in sight. So it's looking more and more like a two-man race coming into Scarborough for the UCI Tour of Tobago title. Now on to Claude Noel Highway, the big main road that will lead into Scarborough. Couple more turns and these guys will be on the Scarborough Esplanade and fighting it out for the UCI Tour of Tobago victory. Oscar Pachon in the red and green of Team Cocos and Team Foundation's rider in the black and red, Felix Cruz. They have been riding as part of the lead group for the entire second half of this race. They have dropped their escape mate And now it is Felix Cruz who is leading out with Oscar Pachon in second wheel. So the riders taking that left hand turn onto Orange Hill Road, heading for Milford Road and the Scarborough Esplanade. 1.7 kilometers to go to the finish of the Tour of Tobago. And it's Felix Cruz right now in lead position with Oscar Pachon on his wheel. Felix Cruz winding his way across either side of the road. It looks like Pachon has been able to get second wheel here. Just waiting to make his move. Now the riders come into the final turn onto the Scarborough Esplanade. It is Felix Cruz leading out. Second wheel is Oscar Pachon. Now Pachon goes to the right side of the road, snaking back and forth. Pachon biding his time to make his move. About 500 meters to go to the finish of the UCI Tour of Tobago. Felix Cruz still being forced to lead out by Oscar Pachon. Finish line is now in sight for the riders. Two hundred meters to go. Felix Cruz up out of the saddle. No move yet by either man. And here is the move by Pachon. Felix Cruz trying to get his wheel, but it is Oscar Pachon with a gap. And Oscar Pachon of Team Cocos and Colombia will win the UCI Tour of Tobago for 2014. Felix Cruz coming across in second place. And now coming in about one minute later is Carlos Ospina from Team Cocos. Rode a great race and finishes third. A look at the official results, Pachon, Cruz, and Ospina, one, two, three, Darren Matthews at the 2012 Tour of Tobago champ with a strong fifth place finish. Aurelian Daniel and Patrick Moran finishing in the top 10. Riveros Garzon dropped to 15th. 
86 riders started the race and 39 finished. 47 did not make it to the finish line. A testament to how tough this race really is. With 2014 UCI Tour of Tobago winner Oscar Pachon. Oscar, how does it feel to win this big race? Feliz, feliz. Eh, de verdad que hoy el Team Cocos eh, han hecho un trabajo excelente. Eh, Carlos Ospina, eh, Camilo Ulloa, Darren, eh, todo el stack eh, técnico han hecho una labor increíble para, para ganar. Eh, feliz, es eh, la primera vez en, en el Tour Internacional de Tobago y contento porque sé que es una carrera muy importante eh, en, en América. Another great year of racing in Tobago. The Tobago International Cycling Classic won by American Winston David and the 2014 UCI 1.2 Tour of Tobago taken by Oscar Pachon. Team Cocos takes the title for the third straight year. In 2015, the Tobago International Cycling Classic and the Tour of Tobago takes place from September 28th through October 4th. So mark your calendar and book your flights. For Ashley Abach, Ronald Dickey, and our entire production team, this is Mark Brown saying thanks for joining us and see you next time.